It is Saturday, September 10th. Okay. Double, double digits in September already. <laughs> Last night we got a little bit of rain, which was kind of a surprise. But yeah. we had a hurricane that came through south and we got a little touch of it. A little bit of flooding in the city. We got about a tenth of an inch here, so not a lot, but enough to have us not have to water this morning. Yes. <laughs> It's Always nice. good when we don't have to <laughs> irrigate things. You've been busy this week. What were you working on? I was working on fertilizing this week. So I got the whole front, so all the citrus, loquats, guavas, mulberries over by the chicken run, and all of the grapevines done with uh, chicken manure. Very good. So we have folks that ask us all the time, when do you fertilize? Now would be one of those times, at least yep. for us here in Arizona. I'm going to go ahead and link a video here. We get a lot of fertilizing questions and we covered some of the details in there of what we do, timing, etc. But basically the month of September, the month of February and the month of May is when we fertilize. Our new little piglet that we got a week ago, he was definitely the runt of the litter because he was the last couple pigs that uh, Pam, Pam and Lanny had. He's been doing fine. I um, mean, he looks healthy. The only problem is he's not eating very good. No. And he's not fighting for the feed like the rest of the pigs do. He kind of hangs back and he'll nibble a little bit, but it, he just, he's not getting chunky. He's still skinny. So we decided to go ahead and take him out this morning. We put him over into a dog kennel in the outbuilding and he pushed his feed bowl over. <laughs> and his water. <laughs> pushed his water over. But then what did he do? Started chowing down on the mashed up food. We're assuming that he just wasn't ready for hard food quite yet. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. So we're going to have to figure that out just to make sure he gets past that stage because he's already kind of the runt. He's already small and we want him nice and big. So speaking of pigs and feed, we need to change up how we fed them. We built a six head feeder uh, last season and it worked okay, but too many pigs with 13 for yeah. that one feeder. Yeah. So we pulled that, didn't put it in. Now we have 19 pigs. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely not big enough. So we have an idea of what we can do.
We've got these 55 gallon barrels. They're pretty easy to find. We actually picked these up off of Craigslist. Had somebody not far from us here selling them for 25 bucks a piece. All we did was basically just cut them in half and then we've connected them with these pieces. What we're using is a two inch eye bolt, which is really the focus on the barrel itself. And we attach that to the fence itself with a three inch locking chain link. So we got those locking chain links off of Amazon. We were surprised how much less expensive those were than it was at Home Depot. So we have those connected to the fence. That way, as you can see, as they start to kind of play around with this and get used to it, they're not actually moving it around the pin itself. So what we'll do with the rest of the barrels is line them all up here just like this and have plenty of space for the pigs to spread out and easily get to the feet. One of the things we've been focusing on now that we have the production side of the farm established and cash flow, more importantly, established for the farm here is we're expanding on to the other areas of the farm where we want to really focus on some permaculture techniques and establishing more desert adapted trees. Part of that process has been Moringa. We've done several plantings of Moringa and we're testing out a few ways of getting it established here during the summertime. The tree you see behind me here is one that we had originally planted from seed and has actually spent the last two years in a large pot. We put this in the ground, I think it was just a couple months ago, and you can see it's come back nice and strong and it looks beautiful. So this is a transplanted tree that was definitely root bound in a pot for a couple of years. While it's come back really strong, what I wanted to show you today has been the test that we've been doing between direct seeded trees and transplanted trees. Earlier this summer, we planted out several seeds that we actually started in the house. We had them under some grow lights before we went ahead and moved them out onto the farm. Then what we did here just a month or two ago was transplanted those potted trees into the ground in four different spots here in our duck and geese enclosure and also in our goat enclosure. I've got some good new growth that's pushing out here over the summertime. I would say right now they're probably about two feet tall, give or take. And the caliper on these trunks I'm gonna guess is probably right around half an inch or so. And that's pretty consistent with these transplanted trees. <laughs> what I wanna do now is show you the direct seeded Moringa. So here is where we have all of our direct seeded Moringa trees. The reason we have these set up here is specifically to give shade to our Thanksgiving turkeys that we'll be raising each year. I'm just under six feet. You can see this is right here at my forehead height. So it's just under six feet as well. And more importantly, the trunk itself. The caliper at the base of this trunk is well over an inch, maybe pushing an inch and a half. Now, I have to be fair, these trees have been in the ground for about a month longer than those potted trees. However, the potted trees are about a month older than these are here. So you can see we're getting incredible growth out of these direct seeded Moringa trees, which leads me to believe that our best bet, as we figured was probably the case, is not to mess around with those roots because these trees are deep tap-rooted trees. They do not like their roots messed with. So being able to direct seed them, in my opinion, is probably your best bet. So speaking of seeds, we get that question a lot as well. Originally, we bought these seeds on Amazon, and I'll be honest with you, that's really your best bet. This tree that you see behind us here and all the trees that we have planted actually all originated from seeds we bought five years ago, four or five years ago from Amazon. Those seeds we pulled off of our tree back in 2018, planted here this summer, and they have obviously done just fine. So you have viable seeds that are viable for a very long time. But once you've got your trees established, like the tree behind us here, we just harvested pods off of this tree that's only been in the ground for a few months. And already off of this tree, we're gonna have seeds that we can go ahead and continue to plant 
or around the farm. Very easy to propagate. You can do them from cuttings. You can also plant them directly from seed. So very simple that way. We prefer direct seeding because it's easy for us here in Arizona. And seeding them during the summertime seems to be working really, really good. We are here with our Thanksgiving turkeys and they are doing fantastic. Yeah. So you're able to cut the sorghum down a little bit. They're able to get to the greens really good and they're munching on the greens. Mm -hmm. So just want to thank you for joining us today. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. We cover a lot of things here on this newly established farm and would love to see you on a regular basis. Any questions or comments, please leave those in the comment section down below. And our Amazon shop, I'll leave a link down in the description. That is a free painless way to help support the channel. If you start with the link down below, it doesn't matter what you buy, you help to support us here. So just wanna thank you for joining us today and remind you if we can farm on the edge of nowhere. So can you. So our new little piggy, that AC came on. <laughs> to be continued. Don't you want it the other way? Oh yeah, I literally do. Okay, I was like confused. Yep. Try. <laughs> <laughs> Try again. Yeah, do over Dwayne and the caliper on these trunks. <laughs> you thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> so we got work to do today. We're gonna be working on, hey, you little turkey, literally. I know you guys. I will not leave that tripod alone. <laughs> you have to be so loud. 